What's going on everybody, Kleepus Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 more tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G that you might not know about. Now as always, if you end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Eye Comfort Shield. So what this does is basically tints the screen in more of a warm amber color, and this is going to help filter out blue light and make things a bit easier on your eyes. Now with this feature, you can technically get to it from the settings menu, but an easier way to activate it is simply by opening your quick menu. To do this, swipe down twice from the top, so one, two. From this screen, go to, by default, the second page, so right here. And as you can see, Eye Comfort Shield is right here, so to turn it on, Hit the icon, and as you can see, the screen is a bit warmer. Now you can also customize it. To do this, press and hold on the icon, and here we are in the menu right here. As you can see with this feature, when you turn it on, by default, it will be adaptive, so depending on your environment and the time of day and stuff, it will adjust the color of the screen, and that way if you're maybe using the phone at night, for example, it's going to make the screen a bit warmer, and that way things are going to be a bit easier on your eyes. But if you want, you can also completely customize it. So if you go here, first of all, you can change the color temperature, so as you can see, it's kind of right in the middle right now, but you can make it a lot warmer or a bit cooler. In addition to this, you can set a schedule, so right now it is always on, but you can also have it turn on from sunset to sunrise, or a custom time. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut to take a screenshot. Now in case you don't know, the normal way to take a screenshot is by pressing your power key and the volume down key at the same time, so like this. And there we go, pretty straightforward. But in addition to this, if you put your palm on the screen and swipe across, so like this. This is also going to take a screenshot, and keep in mind this feature is on by default so you don't have to do anything to activate it, but say you always accidentally activate it and you want to turn it off. To do this, all you have to do is go to settings. From here, go to advanced features, so right here. Then from here, go to motions and gestures. And from here, palm swipe to capture is right here at the very bottom. Toggle it off and now it's no longer going to work. But I do feel like it's a pretty cool feature to have, and in my experience, it's pretty hard to even activate on purpose, let alone by accident, so I feel like there's really no harm in keeping it on. But of course, if you never use it and you want to turn it off, you always can. Now we're going to go over the edge panel. Now in case you're maybe new to Samsung and you don't know what this is, the edge panel is this little line right here, and essentially what this does is, if you pull it out, it's going to give you a bunch of different shortcuts. Now we do have a lot of different options here. First things first, you can customize this bar right here. So right down at the very bottom we have a few different options. This little grid thing is going to open your app drawer, so... There we go. Pretty much every app on your phone. But if you hit the pencil icon, you can also add and remove a few different apps. Keep in mind the calculator for some reason, and then settings in the photo gallery. These three can't be changed, they're always going to be here. But you can have five apps of your choosing down here. And in case you're wondering what this is, it's basically just a pair. So if I press and hold, drag this onto, say, YouTube, it's going to do the same thing. So pretty cool there. But in addition to this, we do have some additional settings here. So to get to these, go to settings, then from here, go to display. And from this menu, go to where it says Edge Panel. So right here. As you can see, it is on, and it will be by default, but if you want, you can turn it off, so. As you can see, there is no Edge Panel now, but in addition to this, you can customize the handle, so if we go here. As you can see, we got a lot of different options. You can change the color, transparency, size, so you can make the Edge Panel a bit larger. So yeah, definitely a few different options here. But in addition to this, if we go back to the main edge panel menu, you can also change the panel itself. So if we go to panels, by default it's just going to be the one apps right here, but you can also add all kinds of different things. So we got stuff like people, smart select, tasks, weather, tools, and you can even download more from the Galaxy Store. So definitely lots of options here, but yeah, in general, the edge panel is a really cool feature and even if you just use the default settings, it definitely can be useful. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make your camera flash for notifications. To do this, go to settings, then from here, go to accessibility, so right here, then from here, go to advanced settings, then from here, under notifications, 
go to flash notification. So the camera flash is right here if we toggle this on. By default, it's going to do it for all apps, but if you want, you can make it just specific apps. And let me show you what it looks like. So I'm going to hit preview. And that's pretty much it. And then if you want, you can also do screen flash notification. Now, I feel like this is probably a lot less popular, but if you want, you can turn this on. And essentially, this is what it looks like. So yeah, I can't imagine a lot of people doing this under normal circumstances, but if you want to, it is always there. Now I'm going to show you a couple different color settings. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A24 or 4G, we are getting a really nice display here, and the colors in general do look really good, but you can customize it even more. To do this, go to settings, then from here, go to display, and then from here, go to screen mode. So as you can see by default, it will be set to vivid, which really enhances the colors a lot. And in my opinion, since this phone does after all have a super AMOLED display in the vivid mode, things do look especially nice. But if you want, maybe the vivid mode is a bit too much for you and you want things to be a bit more natural, you can change it back to natural. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's maybe a more subtle difference, but definitely an option. And in addition to this, in vivid mode, you can customize the actual white balance a bit, so you can make it a bit warmer or a bit cooler. And if you go to advanced settings, you can customize it even more. Now I'm going to show you how to manage your NFC settings. So yeah, in case you didn't know, luckily with the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G, this phone does have NFC, which is the main technology behind contactless mobile payment services. So if you like to use tap and pay, you will be happy to know you can use it with this phone. Now to get to your NFC settings, first of all, go to settings. Then from here, go to connections. And then from here, go to NFC and contactless payments. So as you can see by default, it is on, and I personally wouldn't turn it off unless you have really a specific reason to, because I feel like it doesn't really affect the battery that much, and you might as well have it on since the feature is there. But if you're setting it up for the first time, or maybe you want to change the payment app you use, all you have to do is go to contactless payments, and then from here, you can choose whatever platform you want to use. Now I'm going to show you how to use dark mode. So dark mode is a pretty cool feature, and with this phone, using it is pretty easy. So just like with a lot of features on this phone, you can get to it from the main settings menu, but if you haven't changed your quick menu at all, it will be in there. So to get to it, again, swipe down twice from the top. So one, two, then from here, dark mode is going to be somewhere in here. So as you can see, it's right here for me. So of course, if you want to turn it on, toggle it on like this. And there we go, we are now in dark mode. And then to change the settings, press and hold right here on the icon. And we are now in the dark mode menu. So if you want, you can schedule it. So you can turn it on from sunset to sunrise or set a custom time, so pretty cool. Now I'm gonna show you how to manage notifications on your status bar. So by default, when you get notifications with this phone, things are gonna show up here on the status bar. I don't have anything up here right now, but trust me, when you have a lot of notifications, depending on your settings, it can get pretty messy. So to get to the options, from here, go to settings. Then from here, go to notifications. And then from here, go to advanced settings. So up here under status bar, we got a few different options. First of all, this is another spot where you can enable or disable the battery percentage. So if we go like this, as you can see, the battery percentage is no longer here. Although keep in mind, if you have it off, you can still swipe down and it's going to be here anyway. But in addition to this, by default, when you get notifications on the status bar, it's going to show your three most recent. You can also have it show everything. So if you do all notifications, I personally would never do that, but it is always an option. You can have it show the number of notifications, so maybe you tend to get a lot of notifications and you still want to see them, but maybe not all together. That is an option too, or you could have it show nothing. Now I'm going to show you a feature called Easy Mode. Now this is essentially a display feature, which as the name implies, it basically makes the display look and feel a bit easier to use. Essentially the main idea is it makes everything on the screen larger, but let me just show you. So to get to Easy Mode, Go to settings, from here, go to display, and then from here, easy mode is right down here, so right here. So from this screen, toggle it on, and we are now in easy mode. As you can see, things are a bit easier to use, and by default, keep in mind, the high contrast keyboard will be on, which basically means it's a giant yellow keyboard. I feel like some people might not like it, but if you do, it is always here. I'm going to leave it on for now, but let's go back to the home screen. And as you can see, things are a bit larger, the widgets are a bit different. And let me show you the keyboard. So essentially, this is it. You can also disable this, so if we go back to the settings. Turn off high contrast keyboard. 
now as you can see, it looks pretty much normal. But yeah, this is basically easy mode. It makes things a bit easier as the name implies. And keep in mind with this mode on, the app drawer still technically works, but you don't actually have to go here to get to all your apps. You can just hit this apps button right here. And there we go. You can also hit the magnifier. And this is going to help you zoom in. So yeah, in general, if you do want things to be a bit larger and easier to see, it is nice that we do have this option. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to use the battery saver. So the battery saver is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Basically just puts the phone in low power mode, limits some functionality, and this is going to make the battery last a bit longer. Now keep in mind you're not going to want to use this all the time because again it does limit a lot of functionality. So you should only really use this when your phone is at like maybe 20% and you don't want it to completely die. But essentially to get to battery saver, there are two different things you can do. First of all you can go to settings, so if we go there. From here, go to battery and device care. So right here. Then from here, go to battery. And from here, toggle on power saving. So compared to a lot of other phones, it's maybe not as visible. It doesn't make the entire display into one blank screen or anything, but it does definitely make a difference. So if we go here, as you can see, it turns off the always on display, limits CPU speed to 70%, so Again, it does slow the phone down a bit, so be careful about using it when you don't need to because it will make your experience a bit less good. And it also decreases the brightness. And like, again, a lot of features on this phone, you don't actually have to go all the way to your settings to turn this on. All you really have to do is swipe down twice from the top. And here's the quick menu once more. If you didn't change anything on here, power saving is going to be right here, so you can turn it on or off. So pretty cool there. But those were 10 more tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.